Hello there, I'm a Blockbench artist, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can change your models from looking like this to looking something like this. Okay, but first you'd need to learn how to make a model. Welcome to Blockbench. Now, when you load into Blockbench, you're going to be greeted by a loading screen that looks somewhat similar to this with a splash art of certain artists and this just shows how versatile this program is there's so much you can do with it and no doubt you're extremely excited to get started but before you can begin modeling there are a few things we have to address first blockbench is full of formats and it can be a lot to take in sometimes so you'll need to know which one to pick now the first format that we're going to be working with is Generic Model. Now this is your generic block bench model, it has no restrictions as it says here, and it's for rendering and game engines. Now this will not load into Minecraft, but if we want to create an animations, we're going to need something like this. Up in the top left you'll see a few texts, let's say File, Edit, Tools, view and help now the one we're looking for is file select file then go to plugins now i already have a few plugins installed however the important one is this gecko lib animation utilities to to load a plugin you simply go to available then select the plugin you want and then click this plus that says install. Another useful plugin that you can use is the color gradient generator. And this just really helps me with creating gradients. All right, you've got your plugin. You've got to make sure it's installed. So you have Gecolib animation utils and color gradient generator. Now it's time to create a new model. Once you've installed the Gecolib plugin, you should see down here, below Minecraft skin or Minecraft title, Gecolib animated model. Select this and click create new model. Now before you begin creating your model, there are a few things you need to adjust to make sure that this process is as smooth and intuitive as it can be. Number one is your file name. You can call this whatever you want, but it's important that it's something you remember. If you're doing modding, I like to keep it lowercase, such as this, baby dragon, and with underscores. So, this is the same for your model identifier. Now beneath this, you'll see default UV mode. It's by default set on box UV. I am strongly against box UV, and I'll explain why in advanced texturing. But for now, select per face UV, it'll save you a whole lot of pain. Don't mess with the texture size either. You can keep it 16 or 16 or 32 by 32, but make sure it's always to the power of 2, meaning 16 times 2 is 32, 32 times 2 is 64 and so forth so we're just going to be using 16 by 16 for now all right we're ready click confirm now immediately we're going to be hit with a whole lot of complicated stuff we got this uv editor here we got textures down here we got whatever the heck this is but don't worry i'm gonna break this down for you very quickly so the first thing you want to do is first of all some more configuring i know it's frustrating you're going to go to file project make sure this is per face uv tools should be simple in the toolbox there's all sorts of things that you can use here but they should be already available if they're not and you want any of these then just go to toolbox you now know where to find it the last thing you want to do is go up to this top bar over here where it says move 
Now, by default, this is selected to move. So, you left click, hold down left click to move around, right click, and drag to move your squares around. Scroll in and out, zoom in, and zoom out. It's pretty intuitive. Now, up here you have move, resize, rotate, pivot tool, vertex, toolbar, which there's customize, and then reset. Now just keep it all on default. Up here is local. Set this to global. This will ensure that your pivot point, which is your model locator, will move with your cubes. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's the pivot point? Okay, let me explain. Over here in element, we're going to add a cube. Now, a cube is what all our models are going to be made of. You can edit its position here, but you can also do that by dragging it around. And then there's size, and there's pivot, and all that good stuff, rotation. Pivot is especially important for rotation. Say I have a really tall cube. I'm going to resize this by clicking on the resize thing, or alternatively, you can double click the cube. Well, now it's super tall, and say I want it to rotate from here like a leg. Now, unfortunately, my pivot tool is still down here. Now picture the pivot like a hinge on a door. Wherever the pivot is, that's the pivot. It's self-explanatory. That's where the model will rotate from. So if we use the rotate tool, uh-oh, that's not good. I don't want it to be swinging like that. I want it to be swinging from the top. So we select pivot, then we center the pivot. That will move it to the exact center of the block. And then we bring it up. Now, we can rotate it in the way we wish. But say we have our leg, okay? And we build something, we make something really, really cool over here, okay? This is not really cool. But now we want our leg to be over here. We want to move it down. Now, if I move it down, you can see the pivot followed. It moved down. However, if I did that very same thing and it was set to local, then look what happens. My bad. I did the very same thing I said to local. Look what happens. Oh, the pivot's still up there. It's going to bug out. Now, you gotta remember, each cube has its own separate group, so be just because this is global, doesn't mean this will also be global. I can change it to local, and then this will be global. So it's, it's your workspace. Now we're gonna begin deleting these cubes. The way you can delete cubes like that is simply by right clicking. So you left click to select a cube, right click to do all these things, delete. So, now that you have the basic tools, move, which moves like so, resize, which you can resize with, rotate, which is pivot dependent, and now you know how to use the pivot tool. The next one, vertex snap, is fairly simple, and it requires two, two cubes to work. Say you want this cube to be exactly right under there, right at this corner. You want this corner to be touching that corner. It's fairly simple. You select first with a left click the cube you want to move. Then you left click on the corner that you want to move. Then you right click again on the second cube. And with another left click, it's moved. So that's the vertex tool. There's one more thing you have to learn. If you have a large group of cubes, okay, and you have them in a cool shape, you got an issue. What if you want this group of cubes to be moved 
over here you add a group now a group is like a folder you can click on a cube drag it into a folder and all of a sudden when you click on the folder you move all the cubes this includes rotating it has become one cube now the nice thing about this is you can still edit the cubes individually within the folder but if you select the folder you can move them all at once now it looks like we're making something pretty cool to begin the modeling process i always begin with a folder called full this is very useful because i'm going to put every single thing inside full full is going to be the way i move my whole model now i add another folder it's named a group called body we're going to call these folders groups because that's what everyone else calls it see this is like a hierarchy if i move full and i have a cube inside body then that will move too now inside body i could add a group and i'll rename this to head and I add a cube and now if I move full I move everything if I move body I move head because head is inside body and if I select head I can still rotate it within cube this is helpful because if you move your body your head's gonna come with you and if you move your whole self your whole self is going to come with you so you kind of want everything to be inside full or body all right now we're gonna add our group called body and we're gonna add a group called head and that's pretty much all we're gonna do for now i'm also gonna add another group inside body and i'm gonna call this tail again if your thing is multiply segmented then you're going to need many groups so this is tail segment one now, actually, that should be renamed Tail Segment 2. And then we can duplicate this. Tail Segment 3. We'll duplicate this. Right now, I'm just setting up the interface for the model. Alright. So, I select Body. And I'm going to add a cube. We're going to start working on the body. Now, already, this is getting kind of frustrating. Because I want to make this bit of his body slightly smaller. And I want to make his neck three wide. But I can't really do that. Because right now it's off balance. I have to do a very simple thing. If I want to move my cube. By increments of more than one. I have to select it. On the pixel grid. And hold down shift. So I select my cube. Hold down shift. And now I can move it. 0.5 cubes move so we move half a cube now that's very useful when you're making s more detailed stuff what i'm about to do is inflate this now this is found next to size and it should be right here at the very end and i can inflate it to 0.1 and as you can see it'll make it slightly larger than this cube Now, as you can see, that took me quite a while to get it where I wanted to be. So, now that I have made the horn, I'm going to use a very interesting tool called the Flip Tool. Now, it allows me to do just what it says uh, that it should allow me to do, which is flip a cube along a certain axis. I'm going to be doing a little more adjustment to this here. But otherwise, I think we're finished. Yeah. So, you can see I've named this horn left. The dragon's left horn. I want to take it to horn right. So, I will duplicate this. It, right now, it says horn left too. And it's in the wrong place. But, I go to the top left of block bench. Where it's transform. I flip on the X axis. Bam! Now, our dragon has two horns. 
I'm actually going to delete this horn for now though, and you'll see why in a little bit. Right now I'm centering the pivots of the model. This is important for animation. Basically, I want the movement of the tail segment 6 to originate from this point in tail segment 5 and so forth. It's important to note that when you're modeling, you can only animate a bone. So, I couldn't animate one of these separate cubes. It would have to be inside the bone. We're now going to add the legs. They should be inside body. Alright, and there you have it. You've now learned how to use your modeling tools. Uh, I hope this was useful. And... In the next episode, we're going to be learning how to texture our dragon. So, we're going to be learning about flipping, about where the pivots come in, about how to add multiple textures and multiple elements.